When facilitating whole class conversations or text-based discussions, we don't always have every student participating. When one student has the floor, it's not uncommon that the other students will tune out, check out, and even become disengaged. We know from research that there's power in content conversations. We know that students will meld their ideas and their thinking with their peers. And all of this deepens understanding. It gives students a chance to air their thoughts, but also wash those through what their peers are saying. In fact, that's what a conversation is. It's an exchange and sharing of ideas, all to revise our thinking. This sounds good and all, but how do you achieve this in the classroom? Well, it's gonna start with explicit instruction on talk moves. Students need to know how to engage in this kind of academic conversation. And talk moves provide them different ways to enter the conversation, transition the conversation, agree, add on, and even disagree with those in the conversation. These are four common talk moves. After posing a question and getting the conversation started, kids will signal when they have an answer. But the idea is that the rest of the class is listening and decides if they agree with what that student said. Now here's the biggest thing to notice. In order to agree, they have to have been listening to their peer. See, no more checking out when someone else has the floor. Sometimes we agree with whatever the answer is. Other times we think it's an incomplete answer and we can say a little more. This concept of adding on to what the first person said is exactly what we do in conversations. We take it a little bit further. We give another example. We point out another reason. We add more information. We don't always agree with the answer. Sometimes we disagree. This will now take the conversation in another direction, another perspective, a contradiction of sorts. For many students, they have no concept of these talk moves. They're not used to a conversation. They're used to Q&A. Teacher asks questions and students individually answer those questions. What we want is for them to lean in and listen to one another and then respond, continuing the conversation. Introduce each talk move one at a time and you might Add in the hand signals. Instead of simply raising your hand to give an answer or raising your hand to point out you disagree, students might demonstrate their thinking with different hand signals. Sometimes when kids just have their hands in the air, our conversation is moving the talk in many different directions. Whereas with hand signals, the teacher knows who's agreeing and thinking similarly and who's gonna just deepen the conversation versus those taking it in a new direction. Within this blog post, you'll find two more videos where classrooms are engaged in conversation using talk moves. Now, both those videos are gonna be using math concepts in their conversation, but whether it's science, social studies, or any text, talk moves work in all content areas. Most teachers will begin by introducing these four talk moves explicitly and individually and just give kids a chance to play with them for a while. But be aware that depending on your class, your content area, and how the conversations are all going, sometimes students need us to add more talk moves. That's exactly what happened to middle school teacher Amanda Studer. She realized that her kids weren't able to agree or add on or even disagree because sometimes they didn't even hear what the first person said. So she introduced the repeating hand signal. And sometimes they heard it, they don't understand it. That's a whole nother talk move. I'm confused. Whether facilitating conversations in math, science, or social studies, Students need help transitioning from answering teacher questions and a one-way monologue to engaging in true conversations and dialogue.